6th grade, module 3, lesson 13, classwork. Opening exercise. A radio disc jockey reports that the temperature outside his studio has changed 10 degrees since he came on the air this morning. Discuss with your group what listeners can conclude from this report. Okay, so it studio has changed 10 degrees. Well, if we're talking about temperature, and it, he just said that it changed 10 degrees, we're not sure if it increased by 10 degrees, so did the temperature rise by 10 degrees, or did it fall by 10 degrees? So it's kind of inconclusive here. We're not exactly sure what he's talking about. All we know that there was a change of 10 degrees. So it's not, let's say it's not specific enough. to know whether the temperature went up 10 degrees or down 10 degrees. Example one, a $25 credit and a $25 charge appear similar yet they are different. Describe what is similar about the two transactions. Okay, so a credit means that you gain $25, and a charge means that you're losing $25, you're being charged $25. So they appear similar because they both use the same number. We're both, like, both of them are talking about $25. So similar because they are described using the same number. Something else we could say about them, 25 and negative 25 have the same absolute value. You could say they also have the same absolute value. How do the two transactions differ? So we kind of already talked about it, where a $25 credit means that you're adding to your account, it's gonna increase the money in your account, and a $25 charge would make that money disappear, so you'd be losing $25. So let's say the $25 credit would increase the account balance while the $25 charge would decrease the balance. So the charges are opposites. and negative 25. Exercises. Number one, scientists are studying temperatures and weather patterns in the northern hemisphere. They recorded temperatures in degrees Celsius in the table below as reported in emails from various participants. Represent each reported temperature using a rational number. Order the rational numbers from least to greatest. Explain why the rational numbers that you chose appropriately represent the given temperatures. So there's three tasks here. We're going to represent each one as a rational number in this chart. Then we're again going to list them from least to greatest. And then we're going to explain why the rational numbers represent the given temperatures. So three things. Let's start with um, writing the um, temperatures as rational numbers. So eight degrees below zero. So since it's below, it's going to be negative eight. 12 is just 12, it's positive 12, negative 4, 13 below 0. So again, it's below, so it's going to be negative. 0 will stay the same. 2 above 0, so that's positive 2. 6 below 0 will be negative 6, and then negative 5. So now we need to list them from least to greatest. So the smallest number that we have here 
is negative 13. It would be less than, let's see, I'm going to check them off when I've used them. So negative 13 is less than, let's go negative 8, which is less than negative 6 and negative 5 and negative 4. Okay, so that takes care of all the negatives. So then we have 0 is less than 0. And then between 2 and 12, 2 is less than 12. So there's our order from least to greatest. And then last part, explain why the rational numbers that you chose appropriately represent the given temperatures. Well, below 0 means that it's negative. So let's say the words below zero refer to negative numbers because they are located below zero on a vertical number line. Number two. Jamie's bank account statement shows the transactions below. Represent each transaction as a rational number describing how it changes Jamie's account balance. Then order the rational numbers from greatest to least. Explain why the rational numbers that you chose appropriately reflect the given transactions. Okay, so same as the last one. Debit of $12.20. So that means that you're taking out money from your account. So it's going to be negative $12.20. Credit of $4.08. That means that you gain that money. So that's positive. A charge of $1.50. So if someone charges you, you're losing it. So it's negative. Withdrawal, if you take money out of your account, then your account's going to decrease, so that's negative. Deposit, if you deposit money in your account, then your account is growing, so it's positive. Debit, so again, debit is negative. And then a charge is negative. Okay, now let's list them from greatest, uh, what's it say, from greatest to least. So now we're going to start with the biggest number. I'm looking for the positive numbers. So my positive numbers are 4 and 8 hundredths, 5 and 50 hundredths. That's it. So which one is bigger? 5 and 50 hundredths. I'm just going to write it as 5 and 5 tenths. Is greater than 4 and 8 hundredths. So I took care of those two. Now let's look at the negative numbers. Okay, so the next smallest, remember the larger the actual number, the absolute value, we could list the absolute values and then flip their absolute values if we wanted to in order of how we're writing them, but let's try and just order them. So then would be negative one and 50 hundredths. And then let's see, negative 20, negative 12, negative three and 95 hundredths or negative three. So negative three, would be greater than negative 3 and 95 hundredths. So then we're left with negative 12 and 2 tenths and negative 20. So negative 12 and 2 tenths is greater than negative 20. So let's explain why the words that we used signified either negative or positive. So negative was, let me use a different color, debit means negative, charge means negative, and withdraw all describe negative transactions. And then we can say that credit and deposit describe 
positive transactions. Number three. During the summer, Madison monitors the water level in her parents' swimming pool to make sure it is not too far above or below normal. The table below shows the numbers she recorded in July and August to represent how the water levels compare to normal. Order the rational numbers from least to greatest. Okay, so least to greatest. Explain why the rational numbers that you chose appropriately reflect the wa given water levels. Okay, so one half inch above, so that's going to be positive one half because it's above. A fourth inch above would be positive. Half inch below is going to be negative. Above is positive. Below would be negative. Below is negative. And then another below is negative. So now we're listing from least to greatest. So the smallest number we have here is going to be negative one and one fourth is less than, let's see, oops, I wrote this one wrong, sorry. This is negative three fourths. So now we're comparing the negatives we have left are negative one half, negative three eighths, and negative three fourths. And negative three fourths is the next largest, and then negative one half, and then negative three eighths. Now we just have the positives. So the next smallest, the smallest between one eighth, one half, and one fourth would be one eighth, then one fourth, then one half. So we can say that, if we're going to describe it, above normal describes a positive number above zero and then below normal describes a negative number below zero on a number line. And both of those, when I'm saying above or below zero, I mean on a vertical number line. It wouldn't really make sense if you had a horizontal number line. Or you could say to the left or right, but below and above makes sense more if you're talking about a vertical number line because it would be vertical. Number four, changes in the weather can be predicted by changes in the barometric pressure. Over several weeks, Stephanie recorded changes in barometric, pre barometric pressure seen on her barometer to compare the local weather forecasts. Her observations are recorded in the table below. Use rational numbers to record the indicated changes in the pressure in the second row of the table. Order the rational numbers from least to greatest. Explain why the rational numbers that you chose appropriately represent the given pressure changes. Okay. So a rise would be positive. A fall would be negative. Rise is positive. Fall is negative. Rise, fall, and another fall. So now we need to list them from least to greatest. Let's start with the negatives. Negative 21 hundredths, negative 3 hundredths, negative 9 hundredths, negative 14 hundredths. So the smallest would be negative 21 hundredths is less than. Next we would have between 14, 9, and 3, negative 14 hundredths. Then negative nine hundredths, and then negative three hundredths. So now, if we're listing them from greatest to least, on, or least to greatest, with the positive numbers, I'm going to add zeros here so that we can compare 
There's four hundredths, twenty hundredths, and ten hundredths. So the least would be four hundredths, then ten hundredths, and then twenty hundredths. So here are the words that helped us to describe or figure out if it was a positive or negative number, we can say that, let's say rise in pressure describes an increase or positive number. and fall in pressure describes a decrease or negative number. Example two, using absolute value to solve real world problems. The captain of a fishing vessel is standing on the deck at 23 feet above sea level. He holds a rope tied to his fishing net that is kept below him underwater at a depth of 38 feet. Use a diagram to draw a diagram using a number line and then use absolute value to compare the lengths of the rope in and out of the water. Okay, so we have the captain standing at 23 feet above sea level. So he's at positive 23 feet. He holds a rope tied to his fishing net that is below him underwater at a depth of 38 feet. So underwater would mean that it's negative 38 feet. So let's draw a number line. And I'm going to make zero. So that is the water level. That's sea level. And then we know that the fisherman is, or the captain is at 23 feet above sea level. So there's 10, 20, 30. So the captain's about right there at 23. He holds a rope tied to his fishing net that is below him underwater at a depth of 38 feet. So the rope that he's holding goes all the way down to negative 38 feet. So let's do negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40. So his rope is right here at negative 38. So there's the rope. I'll draw a stick figure. So he's standing there at 23 feet. Holding the rope is going all the way down to negative 38. So we could say, what does it want us to explain here? Draw a diagram. Okay, we drew a diagram. Then use absolute value to compare the lengths of rope in and out of water. So the rope in the water, I'll use blue right here, the length in the water is negative 38 feet. So we were to use absolute value to find the magnitude of that or how far underwater it is, the absolute value of 38 is equal to 38. So we can say that there's 38 feet below sea level. So then above sea level, there's this length right here. I'll use green, I like land above the sea. Above the water is 23 feet. So the absolute value of 23 feet is 23. So if we're comparing, below the water is 38 feet. Above the water is 23 feet. So there is more rope underwater than above. And if we really wanted to compare how much more, we could say 38 minus 23 is equal to 15. So there 
is 15 feet more rope below water than above. Example three, making sense of absolute value and statements of inequality. A recent television commercial asked viewers, do you have over $10,000 in credit card debt? What types of numbers are associated with the word debt and why? Write a number that represents the value from the television commercial. So the types of numbers that are associated with debt are negative numbers. So negative numbers are associated with debt because debt means you owe money. So you owe money, you're down $10,000, so negative 10,000. Give one example of over $10,000 in credit card debt. Then write a rational number that represents your example. So if you owe over $10,000 in credit card debt, you could owe $10,001, you could owe $100,000, you could owe a million dollars, so just anything greater than 10,000. So I'm gonna say, let's see, credit card debt, Uh, let's go $12,000. And if I were to write that as a rational number, that would be negative 12,000. In debt $12,000, I owe $12,000. How do the debts compare and how do the rational numbers that describe them compare? So I chose $12,000 and it's greater than 10,000. So the debt, so 12,000 is greater than 10,000, but the rational numbers that we have, so negative 10,000 and negative 12,000, negative 10,000 is greater than negative 12,000. So the rational numbers negative 10,000 and negative 12,000 have the opposite order because they are negative. which we know because if you find their absolute values, then they're going to be the opposite of what the negative numbers are in order.